so you were telling me that just before coming on this Zoom session, you had used our personal peak procedure. You, your only exposure to this really is reading my book, The Unseen Therapist, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I gather you you applied it to a past specific event and got results. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. And the intensity was like a 10 and now it's like a 2 or a 1 or fading? Yes. Okay. So we don't need to be here anymore? Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's interesting is that I get that there's layers. Like mm -hmm. the, um, I'm still having grief. I'm still feeling sadness. And I get that a portion of it is that the incident happened, the event happened, and then I made it mean something that then got repeated. And so it was like like a lasagna. Right. <laughs> the well, song I addressed, <laughs> but not the noodles or the cheese or the, you know, mm -hmm. that's been layered. Well, we'll we'll go over that, but I want to go back over something else first because I I need to more know more about you uh, and the circumstances if I can do yeah. give any more value. Okay, so I got to explore some things with you. Okay, you started coughing and coughing and coughing, and you had to leave the room and da 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 da. I'm sitting there in my chair. What happened? What happened? What happened? Where'd she go? And I da. And you were telling me it was asthma. Yes. Um, and in my experience, the cause of asthma, this is not a medical thing. The medical people don't see it this way. But to me, the cause of asthma is unresolved emotional issues. I think I mentioned that to you and you said, yes, 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 it is grief. I mean, you, uh, I summarized that, but I did, did I say it right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. I didn't ask you what the grief was about, how long you had had it or anything else. So let me explore a few other things with you. I gather this one specific event you were you had success with yeah. uh, had to do with this grief issue? Yes. Okay. We'll get back to it in a moment. We'll get back to it in a moment. Let's talk about the asthma for now. All right. Um, when did the asthma first start? You had it your whole life or... AIDS, whatever, tell yeah, me. So it was, you know, I was, I was diagnosed, so to speak, um, when I was in, I think I was like 21, 2021. And as I look back, I recognize that I had asthma all throughout. Like it, it just wasn't diagnosed. Okay. When do you think, when do you, when do you think the asthma started? That's my question to you. Um, well, I would say probably when I was three. Okay. Okay. Age three. Age three? Question mark. Okay. Maybe All four. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Keep going. Um. And so you know, it's it's interesting because as I was doing this the exercise, um, I didn't intend this to be the event. It's just what showed up. Like I was like, okay, what event am I going to be specific about? And, you know, go through the process and close my eyes and have the unseen therapist blow a breeze and release it. Okay. All, all that from my book. Yes. All okay. that from the book. Yeah. Right. Actually, I really like the recording. So thank you so much for having it recorded. Okay. Um, and um, and it was, it it lessened it. Like what I noticed was that you know, the specific, uh, the movie, as you said, like there was a specific event. It actually was longer than I was addressing. Like first it was like, okay, it was this part with my dad. It was this part. And it was like, nope, it goes back. And then, nope, it goes back. And so it's a pretty long movie for okay. me as a two and a half year old. 
And there's another movie that comes before that, which is perhaps why I still have some discomfort. Well, yeah, and what you're talking about are related events. You're talking about aspects. And we, we have an advanced course where we get into all of that. See, that book is an introductory book. Okay. And it, it's good that you used it and got some relief, but but typically there's more to it. And that's why you and I are talking today. We're going to get yeah. to the more to it. Thank yes, you. I, I, I expect. All right. But I want to get back to asthma for a moment. Yeah. So somewhere around age three, I gather you were having breathing problems, coughing problems. Tell me. Yeah. So um, I... I was always known as the sickly child in the family. Okay. So certain foods would trigger me. Certain, um, you know, if the temperature changed, if I wasn't comfortable, if I wasn't rested. I mean, they're like all of the classic triggers of asthma. I had those. And, and so uh, the outcome was I was sick. Like I was mostly sick. Most of my growing up, like just different, like, and and i and i can't it's only recently that i that i've owned up to grief and coughing is my way of releasing there's the grief has to come out some way um whereas when i was younger i would just get sick i think i would cough and they would give me cough syrup but i don't remember the specifics okay. i just know that i'm known in the family as the sick one like the the fragile she's always sick okay let me let me just stop you right there for a second because again what i'm doing here is exploring stuff i'm trying to get a bigger picture because the only thing i know about you is what you tell me and that is hardly your whole life story okay um mm -hmm. so i need to get into a few things okay one of the things that's possible i just want to ask you how possible you may see this, okay, is that here you are a child and you have some sickness early on uh, and you become known in the family as the sickly child or the sick child or whatever words you used, okay. Sometimes, this is what I want to explore, sometimes that uh, establishes a belief within you, I am a sick child, and, and your system follows right along, and you become that uh, because your system believes it, all right? Not because you are a sickly child, but because your system believes it, and you just play it out, okay? Now, you may or may not be aware of that. I'm only asking you, does that seem to have some relevance? Maybe so, maybe not. Tell me. Um, I, I, I never really experienced myself like I was sickly. I think that what I, how I took that to mean was that I was delicate. So I couldn't take risks, like I shouldn't overly exert myself physically. But then at a certain point when I was a teenager, that disappeared. Like I no longer had that because you know i was i was strong and i was physically active i was an athlete uh -huh. so it sort of didn't it didn't make sense oh okay so i didn't right. actually operate in that way outside of you know not not taking risks like when there's a bicycle to learn how to ride the bicycle it's like no i don't want to ride the bicycle because i might get hurt and that wouldn't be a good thing Okay. But if I'm hearing you right, you at some level outgrew that. And today you aren't, you may have asthma, but you're not the sickly child anymore. Do I, do I hear it right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually there. The, the part of me that wreck, like I finally stood, like I finally took that I have asthma. Like it's been, it was told to me in my twenties, but I never really, operated like i've had asthma it's only in the past few months that i that i've that i've thought oh wait i'm coughing this is a symptom of asthma and and maybe in the past like the month before i saw you was where i said oh wow 
I guess it's true. I actually have asthma. So previous times I'd have colds and it would be more aggravated or I'd have, you know, a sensitivity to, to pollen and I I put it down to allergies. I never, I never accepted that I had asthma because that's not something that I want in the same way. Like I don't, I don't want to have, I don't want to be considered autoimmune compromised with asthma. (laughs) Okay. So you don't, you don't use a puffer or, or any other asthma type medication. I have it, but I don't use it. And I've I've taken like a few pills. I I would say maybe, you know, in the packet I may have in my entire life, like just again recently in the past, you know, month and a half, have taken maybe like six pills, eight pills at most. Uh-huh. Because again, it's like I I don't I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't well. want <laughs> Well, belief has a lot to do with these things, okay? More to do with these things than most people recognize, including including doctors, okay? Um, so you're not describing to me, at least, and I hope you know I'm not a physician. I'm a Stanford-trained engineer, okay? So I have a very, very different approach to all of this. But I'm not hearing from you... Um, what I would, what I, non doctor Gary, would label as asthma. Asthma is, at least in my view, and you can correct it, please do, okay, um, is something where you are, you are needing to use a puffer. It's very difficult of, of any time for you to, you know, exert yourself and, and climb steep hills and stairs and, uh, 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 you're out of breath easily, da 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 da, da. and it's pretty constant all the time. It isn't just; it happens on Saturdays sometimes, once a month. Uh, it's it's pretty much there. So, contrast what I just think asthma is with what you have, and is it asthma? And and, and tell Perfect. me, okay, okay. Yeah. So I have mild asthma. I, some people have asthma that doesn't actually require a medication. It's just recognizing that there's certain triggers. So for me, if I do exercise, I will start wheezing. If I, um, if I laugh too much, I will start coughing. If I, um, you know, if I'm emotional, you know, it's like the, the odds of asthma showing up is there except that in my case it's not wheezing it's coughing and so because i haven't really i like recognized that those symptoms are equal asthma because for me it's the same like i don't want it to be like i have to take an inhaler but many people have mild asthma and don't i mean i didn't for huge periods of time, but when I'm affected and I'm sick, it tends to last longer because of the diagnosis of, I mean, not because of it, but, you know, it's like I, I never put the pieces together that okay. this is why. All right. Well, okay. You may have been diagnosed with asthma, okay? And maybe you have what doctors would call asthma. I'm not saying you are or you aren't. I look at it a bit differently than that. Rather than give it a label, what I'm saying to myself, but again, you always need to correct me because I'm giving you my best guess based on what I understand so far. And if you don't correct me, then we can go in a door and spend time uselessly. Okay. Okay. So, but I'm going to diagnose you my way from what I understand. Okay. How's that? Yes. Um, You have developed something. So when you exert yourself, you have some kind of a breathing abnormality. Yes. That, That works. Yes. Also when the weather changes, that, shift between the hot and the cold and it can be very mild can also have me have breathing challenges 
So, so, so we're gonna we're gonna call it not asthma, but BC breathing challenges. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, because in the same in the same way, um, you know, pollen, dust, perfumes, which all are listed under asthma triggers. Trigger okay. me. Well, all right. Emotion, stress, fatigue puts me at a greater risk of having breathing challenges. And I like it. I'll take breathing challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no, we're going to change. We're going to change it. We're going to call it CBC. Okay. Correctable breathing challenges. Yes. Does that work? I love it. <laughs> CBC. Yes, I like it. <laughs> Well, just like I said, I did the P3. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pers personal peace procedures from my book you're talking about. Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. All right. Um, but one thing you didn't mention there for a trigger, I, I think you alluded to it a few minutes ago, but not just in the last few moments, was... Um, Grief challenges. Yeah. Something happened, but you had a big time coughing spell. You had to leave the room and it wasn't just for 20 seconds. You were gone for, I don't know, 10 minutes or yeah. something. And I could hear you in another place. <laughs> you know, on and on and on and on and on. Okay. Um, were you at that moment plugged into some grief episode that showed up? emotionally for you um well it's it was a period it is i've been having uh stressors that have triggered my grief and i've had things that have been giving that i've been experiencing grief as present like things that i have grief over now and i interpret that to mean that my grief cup runneth over <laughs> and therefore you know a, a stress or something that that's upset me will have me coughing okay well it's my experience and i don't know if it, if this experience applies to you directly partially or anything else but it is my experience that while you may have cbcs okay <laughs> um because of certain allergies you know, perfumes or whatever the case may be. Um, the the big one often is some form of unresolved emotional issue. And grief can be a very big one. Guilt can be another one. Fear can be one. Angers, resentments. I mean, we all collect these over time. You can't get through this world without doing that. Okay, it's just that they, they show up and knock on your door with great frequency in this world. Okay, and it wouldn't surprise me to learn. Now, I'm, this is not a prediction or a guarantee. It wouldn't surprise me to learn that if we got you a good start, which is what we're going to try to do today, a good start on where to go with the emotional contributors to all of that, grief being a centerpiece so far in our discussion. That's some of those allergies and other issues are going to start to fade because we're taking care of, I'm hoping, the cause, the main cause of these things. Okay. Um, I, I, I know you have a medical type background, but I'm just going to mention something to you um, and get your thoughts on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I've passed what I'm going to say here now to, I can't tell you how many doctors, MDs, and, and everyone, no exceptions, everyone agrees with me wholeheartedly, but I'm going to give it to you because I think it applies here, okay? And that's this. All doctors recognize that when their patients, you in this case, are harboring or experiencing some form of negative emotion. You're angry about something, you're guilty about, you have grief about something and all of this. Your system, your brain 
creates a literal cascade of what I'm going to call negative chemistry. That is, your adrenaline goes out of balance big time, okay? Your cortisol goes out of balance big time. Hundreds, I mean, you're nodding your head, okay? yeah. <laughs> but, but, but hundreds, hundreds of um, repair mechanisms, chemical equations that are going on in your body at all times are being compromised, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, and when those things happen, your immune system has to go do something with that or you're in trouble. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it goes and does something with that. So you won't be in trouble. Okay. But when it does that, there's only so much to your immune system. And so it is distracted from doing its other job. And that is to keep you know, diseases and ailments and coughing and, and uh, correctable breathing challenges, et cetera, <laughs> at bay. It, it doesn't do those things. It takes care of this more immediate thing, okay? Further, you don't necessarily have to be angry at the moment or grief-stricken at the moment that you're consciously aware of. It could be in the background, and it's still doing its damage. Now, you understand that? Disagree with it? Tell me where you are. Uh, you're you're preaching to the choir. I f- I thought I was, but I thought yes, I would yes. Do it in- uh-huh. You got me. You had me at hello, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> A little Tom Cruise saying, right? A little Tom Cruise, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. From the movie Jerry Maguire, if I remember right. that. Right. It yeah. was. And um, yeah. the woman, um, what is her name? Renee, uh, Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger. Right, right, right. Zellweger. That's okay. right. Well, okay. So so with that background in mind, let, let's turn for the moment to grief. Now, is this grief one specific event? Is it several things over time? Tell me. Um, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's just like a continuation of, you know, like the, the initial grief of, you know, my experience is that my father didn't love me. And so therefore every male relationship has, has shown up in my experience in the same way. That doesn't mean that he didn't actually love me, but my experience is that. Okay. And then I also set up the repeat of that pattern, which then I have grief over this guy and that guy and this other person and that other person, you know, and so it just perpetuates. So the, the, yeah, these are romantic relationships that you get involved with and they, they you get dumped or they, they don't work for some reason and, Yes. It isn't like somebody died, which is a... I haven't had anyone die. My father died. So there is also grief connected to that. <laughs> and But he died 13 years ago. And actually, some of the grief that I experience now has to do with there was a moment where... I finally recognized that my father did love me, even though I didn't experience it. And that's also recently happened. So that kind of like cracked open my grief over the loss of my father. Okay. So there's just layers of it. All and right. so, you know, the discomfort, it's sort of like, you know, how do you separate, you know, the the salt from the stew from the carrots that yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Then okay. melted into it. All right. Let me let me do a little testing with you. Okay. Um, and I'm going to have have you do something you're probably not used to. So just do your best with it. Okay. What I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you say out loud one at a time um, some short little sentences that I'll give you. Okay. And what I would ask you to do is to say the sentence out loud. Um, and then tell me on a scale of zero to 10, how true does that sentence 
appeal to you. I don't want the logic. We want the emotional response. Very, uh, I mean, your your logical response may be totally different from your emotional. So we're looking for the emotional response. Okay. Okay. So um, let me make a little note to myself here. All right, the first sentence, and say it out loud, and then give me the zero to ten about how it how true it feels. Ten is oh, is that ever true? Oh, oh, oh. and zero is that. Ah. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Ten. Um, there's there's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. Ten. I'm not lovable. I'm not lovable. Eight and a half. Nine. I'm going to write down nine. <laughs> does, that work? does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Eight point nine eight. <laughs> Well, these numbers are guidelines, okay? Yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold on a second. I got the, some there's something on the phone here. Hold on a minute. Here we pray. Hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Could you do me a favor and call me in a couple of hours? I'm, I'm on another call call right now, okay? <coughs> All right, thanks. Bye. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. What, was that cough because we just triggered something? Perhaps, yes. Okay. Well, you know what's so great, Gary, is that... Um, I know it's related to grief because when I allow myself to cry, my coughing goes away. Oh, because you're expressing it in some fashion. Right. Okay. Well, we'd like to get to the point where... There's no coughing needed. <laughs> yeah. And no expression needed either. Okay. So um, that would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be called... Be that would be very nice. That okay. would be called freedom. And that's achievable, by the way. That's achievable. Okay. Not good enough. Something's wrong with me. Not lovable. Um, well, that'll do for now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> um. Okay, so uh, uh, let's do a little philosophy for the moment. If you're a young child and you're carrying around, whether it's logically valid or not, that there's something wrong with you, you're not good enough, you're defective in some cash, you're not lovable, uh, and you were telling me earlier you didn't think your father may have loved you, but, and I'm paraphrasing here, correct me if need be, okay, he wasn't loving you in the way you wanted it to be or you needed yes. it to be. Okay. Yes. Okay. That happens a lot. Uh, the parents do love the children, but they don't. I mean, the child is, doesn't know how to say, well, if you really love me, you've got to do A, B, and C, and that's how I'll get it. Okay. They don't know your rules for it. They have their own rules, by the way, about how to feel love. What, love, what expression of love looks like. Yeah, what it is. Okay. Language of love is a different language. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for example, for example, um, my my main channel to understand that I'm loved is kinesthetic. You got to touch me. That's not necessarily sexual. It's you got to hold my hand. You've got to rub my back, shoulders, something like that. You, the touch is how I really get it. You can tell me you love me, and that counts, but, you know, it count. You, it's not the same as touching, okay? You can show me you love me, 
you know, by making things for me or dressing up nice for me or buying me presents that I can see and things like that. And that's nice, you know. But you really, you know, if you're really going to do the job, you got to touch me. That, that's just my rule. I didn't even know that for years. Okay. And other people will lean on different things. You've got to show me. You know, you, you, I, I want to hear it. Okay. Uh, or I need all three. That's a person who has a really difficult time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. but it that's what i'm pointing out and 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 what i'm reason i'm even mentioning that is in in our terminology we call that a reframe that is it's 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 trying to give validity to the idea your father may well have loved you but you didn't get it that way you felt unloved i'm saying am i saying it correctly that's correct yes okay all right Yes, there's actually a book, Gary, if I may just suggest. It's called The Five Languages of Love. Uh -huh. And it lists five possible ways. There's, you know, touch or affection. There's acknowledgement, like with words. There's being of service, like where I'll go pick up your laundry. There's giving time. And then there's gifts. And people may express in different ways. Yeah, okay. You're not speaking the same language as the person who's doing yeah language okay. it's like you're speaking japanese and i'm german okay yeah 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 S same concept but what i'm hearing in all of that is you as the young child weren't getting it on your wavelength right okay doesn't mean doesn't mean it wasn't happening i mean you weren't getting it okay and that's what's important because when you're not getting it you then and children do this uh conclude that there's something wrong with you. You're not lovable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that being carried around has a lot of effect on your world because you'll see the world through that filter. Yeah. And then things that happen in the world through that filter tends to exaggerate the filter, make the, you know, make the I'm not lovable even worse and perpetuate it. And da -da 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 can you, let's take the I'm not lovable thing for the moment. Can you find someplace in your past, the further back, the better. So we're hopefully looking at childhood, if you can do it. Find a time, let's say with your father, where a specific event, okay, where your father... It, well, you said to yourself, my father doesn't love me. Yes. Okay. What age were you? Two and a half. Two and a half. And this event, how long did it last? Um, it lasted like a minute like a the whole the whole movie lasted a minute okay. perhaps maybe like two minutes something like that if this movie well first of all first of all in this one or two minutes is there a crescendo? Something is said and you had a reaction to it or that yes. might last a few seconds. It would be the crescendo in the book. Yeah. That, that, that was, that was uh, like a second. All right. And was that something somebody said? Something you felt? Something? Yeah, he smacked my bottom. All right. Okay. I don't want to put you through unnecessary turmoil because it's not really required to do this. So I, what I want you to do is to, if you would, please, uh, I want you to make, make a guess for me because I don't want you to go back and feel that smack on your bottom and see the look in his face or whatever else was in, involved in all of that. I don't want you to put you through that. What I would like to have you do is guess for me if, if, don't do it, but if 
you were to go back and vividly imagine that whole bit where you got smacked in vivid, vivid, vivid terms, what zero to 10 emotional intensity do you think you would get to? Do you guess you would get to? When that happened? No. Yeah. Now yeah. as you remember it. Oh, now as I'm remembering it. Um, maybe like a six or seven. All right. Are there any physical sensations going on with that, as you remember that, with that six or seven? Yeah, there's tightness, like I can't breathe. There's a like tightness you, in, in like my you chest. Can't, like you yeah. can't breathe. Oh, well, there's a clue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I can't breathe and I can't speak. And you can't Explosive. speak? Speak? Yeah, like there's a constriction in my being able to even speak it. A tightness in my throat. Okay. Well, you seem to be able to talk okay, okay. <laughs> Currently, okay. Uh, well, I, I, to my to my ears, you're speaking okay. Are you feeling? Uh, yeah, I feel tightness. Okay. And there's fear. Of? I just feel the fear. There's just, I'm experiencing fear. Like you're going to get hit again or hit harder, or can you tell? That, um, that in my freeing up what there is, that I will feel worse. There's, there's fear of experiencing the grief. I want to get behind that a little bit. Yeah. Fear, as our session here progresses, you're going to land into grief you don't want to expect, you don't want to have. Right. Is that what we're saying? Correct. Okay. Well, I'm going to be as gentle as I can. How's that? Thank you. Yes. I'm making a note, though. Okay. When your father smacked your bottom, um, was there, or did you notice, a other things going on that might have said I'm not lovable, such as a look in his eyes, a tone of his, a tone of his voice, uh, any other clue along there that would might contribute to your emotional response. Um, well, yes. Yeah, so very like in that time frame, my sisters can't joined my family because they had been left in Lebanon with my grandmother. And so they had joined my family and my father had come home and said, why aren't you ready to my sister? Why aren't you and so ready? And my sister said, because he keeps taking off the clothes. So I created a game that my sister would put the clothes on me. And then I, she taught me how to take it off. So it was like, oh my gosh, now I take it off, run around, run around. She chased me, put, put the shirt back on. And then I would take the shirt off. And then we were, this is a fun game. Mm -hmm. So when my father came home and he said, why aren't you ready? You know, he was upset that we weren't, I wasn't dressed. She said, this is what's happening. And so I thought, well, she doesn't know, but my dad loves me. He's, I'm his favorite. I'm the one that he wants, not you as a uh -huh. sister. And so then I took off my shirt also thinking, because my dad likes it when I'm naked took off the shirt and he smacked my bottom. And then in that moment, I thought, I'm not wanted and the world hurts. And that's how I've lived my entire life, proving and disproving that. Okay. That sounds pretty foundational. 
to yep. it. Is that the specific event you dealt with before we started here? No. That was a different one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have to pick up on one thing. Your father liked to see you naked. Was there any form of sexual abuse or yes. molestation? That's what I was clearing before I got on the call, which happened, uh, I guess, maybe a month before this incident because my mom traveled to bring my sisters to to the New York, to the U.S. And it was in that time that he molested me. Right, I need to get a little more specific on that. Okay. Molested. That is. Yeah. He... So he, he rubbed himself on me and like I was the, the object for which he masturbated. Okay. And you watched him masturbate and all of that? No, I was sleeping. And then I woke up to feeling him on me, rubbing on me. And I couldn't breathe. Another clue. Um, I thought I was going to be smothered. I was actually terrified that he was, that I was going to die because I didn't know what he was doing. And then he peed like I had it, that it was pee. And then I was scared that I was the one who peed, but then I checked and I still had my underwear on, but I didn't have my shirt on. And then I thought, oh, he's the one who peed. He's the one who's going to get in trouble, not me. I'm going to remember that I'm not the one who peed in the bed because he never liked it if I did on accident because I was still learning how to not pee in the bed. Okay. So, so, um, did he actually pee or was this a ejac ejaculate or ejaculation? But for oh, me as a child, I didn't know that. I just knew pee. Like, what else would it be okay. that was wet? And then he All went right. and got a washcloth and wiped it off. And then and then he fell asleep. And I was just terrified that he was that something was going to happen again. And then I, I crawled out of the bed and tried to get to my aunt who was sleeping in the other end of the apartment. As you speak about this now, mm -hmm. what number are you getting to intensity? What, zero to ten? Maybe like a three or four. that I have pain, I, I can, so the pain that I feel in my lungs is more like an eight, but what I experience is more like it's a three or a four because I'm like not present to what's happening in my body. In psycho speak terms, you are, as you discussed this, dissociating? Dissociating, Do you know yes, I'm dissociating from the experience okay. so that if I can speak it. Okay, if you weren't dissociating, I'm guessing you'd be at a 10? Yeah. Let me make a note here, okay. From what I'm hearing, but I need to have you verify this, between the being smacked on the bottom and the molestation issue, the bigger one is the molestation issue. Well, yes, because then that same, you know, so the the span of that evening is that I then crawled to, you know, as, as close as I could to where my aunt was and then just started crying and calling for my mother. And then my aunt came and said, are you is your are you in pain? And I said, yes, because I couldn't I wasn't verbal. Okay. At that point. And then my dad showed up. And I could see that he was scared that I was going to tell on him. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't want to sleep next to him anymore. Then I just wanted to stay with my aunt, which the whole time I was thrilled that my mom was gone because then I got to be with my dad, who was like my all oh, everything human being. All right. Now, just so I'm clear, there was no sexual penetration. Correct. Okay. It was him rubbing against you a form of masturbation. He ejaculated. You thought he was peeing, but it wasn't, etc. I'm also wondering in all of this, this is just so I can get a, a really clear picture. Okay. I'm also wondering in all of this, 
what your response and I'm going to go back to your response at that time as a child. If you were not at some level confusing that activity with some form of love and affection. It didn't feel like love and affection. Okay. It felt, it felt uncomfortable and actually there was a part of me that I get, I'm, I'm getting now. I was afraid that something that he was, there was something wrong, like because of, you know, how he was breathing. Like I, I actually just remembered that now, like he was breathing heavy. And, um, but it was more of a, I'm about to have an orgasm. Right. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what that was. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, and it felt like he was his weight. He was he like I, I couldn't, like my face was where his belly button was because I was a little kid, and yeah. he's foot tall. Um. So I re I remember, and this might not be true, but I remember trying to to push him away because I couldn't breathe. Like there was no access to air when there's like a body smothering you. Okay. Now, but but you're saying that sometime thereafter, shortly thereafter, you got to be with your dad again. And that was a pleasant experience. I'm with my dad. I'm a special. Uh, did I did I miss did I mishear that? Yeah. So what happened after that was he withdrew from interacting with me. And until there was this one, this incident where he came home and I would say maybe it was like a few weeks, maybe it was a month. I don't know. Oh, but this is smacking you on the bottom. That was when he smacked me on the bottom. That was the interaction. So prior, so between the, I'm not, I'm, you know, having that where he ejaculated and then going and staying with my aunt, sleeping next to her instead of my dad. Uh -huh. um, the very next incident that I remember of interaction with him was being smacked on the bottom. Okay. Whereas before I was always with him. Like he was, you know, I was like Velcro. Yeah. Okay. And, and after the, that incident, you know, where he ejaculated, um, there, there ceased to be any contact. So there's a part of me that also questions if that's when, there's the grief because I didn't really, I mean, I was, yeah, I was scared because I couldn't breathe, but I was like, okay, well, I pee in the bed and he peed in the bed and okay, what are you going to do? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Um, it was the complete withdrawal of having my dad in my life. Like he just stopped interacting with me. And then yeah. the very next interaction was where he smacked my bottom where I was like, yeah, he's going to play with me now. Okay. And he didn't. Yeah. All right. And he didn't from that point forward. Yeah, he didn't from that point forward. We 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 may have had like one or two times past that. Like if there was somebody, I remember one time where there were visitors that came and then um, because they were there, I was able to go and cuddle with my dad. Like I was able to sit, you know, in his arms, which All is right. the place that I always wanted to be. Okay. So- Correct this scenario that I've now got from what you're telling me. All right. uh, there's the young you who, like all young children, want to be adults as well, want yeah. to be loved. Yes, we want, we're searching love. We want to be loved. We're a young child, our presumed sources of love, parents, okay, and, and family and uncles and aunts, and but primarily parents, okay. In your case, primarily father right? something happens in the meantime and the young you doesn't know how to interpret all these things you at, at this point at age two and a half have no idea what a male sex drive is okay it, it just comes out of the blue but there it is okay um don't know how to interpret it 
But because of that, he doesn't want you telling on him. He's going to keep his distance. You interpret it as he doesn't love me like he used to. I'm not deserving of the love. There's something wrong with me. I am the guilty one here. I must have done something wrong. How am I doing? Yeah, cognitive dissonance. I'm there. Okay. All right. I took it on like it was me. Okay. That was blame that All I'm right. involved in this right. scenario. Okay. Well, now I wasn't there either. Okay. So I'm going to make an assumption or two, but again, you want to correct me. Okay. I'm making the assumption your wife, your mother, is gone to Lebanon. Your father has his sex drive. He inappropriately engages you in that sex drive. Inappropriately. Yes. Okay. A mistake on his part that even he would recognize. You may not recognize it at that young age, but on, he would recognize it is a mistake on his part. He never did it again. Correct. Okay. A mistake on his part. All of this, of what I'm leading to with this conversation, is a reframe. It's a, what I want to. What I want to. What I'm aiming at is to, is to shift any any um, thoughts in your mind that there is really something wrong with you when it was his mistake. Right. Okay. Yes, I get that. Okay, well, you may get it logically. Intellectually, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're going to, that's not good enough for our purposes, okay? Okay. <laughs> we want it to really land emotionally so that there is a form of forgiveness involved. Sometimes that is best understood at this level as understanding where he's coming from. We're, we don't excuse the behavior. That's important to recognize. We're not excusing the behavior. If he had to do it over again, my guess is he'd say, whoa, no, I'm not going to do that, okay? <laughs> but we're, we're still not excusing the behavior. But we are. we want to get to a point where you understand uh, even though it's not excusable behavior, you understand where he was coming from and it had nothing to do with you. You were not the seducer. You were not the responsible for it. You're just a little girl running around inside a little girl's body, a much smaller version of the wife he's used to. How am I doing? Really well. Okay. Thank All right. All right, what I would like to do is bring an unseen therapist, okay, now that we have done some stuff here, okay? And it's going to be a little different than what you got out of the book because I mean, it's a little more advanced and so on. Um, you don't need to do anything. It's just have to follow along, okay? Okay. Um, if something occurs to you to say, something we haven't talked about, some new thing or something like that, or you don't agree with something or just say so. Okay. Say so. Okay. Um, so in that sense, we're doing it together. There, there is one thing that uh -huh. has come up since we've been talking is that I realized that for me, my dad was like my last hope for there is love for me oh, Okay. because my mom had already failed me <laughs> at that point. So even though I loved my mom and I didn't really want her to go, another part of me was happy she was gone. Okay. Was she abusive in some fashion? She was abusive with anger. And I don't know if there was hitting at that point, but she did after. So I don't, I don't remember at that age, but I couldn't count on her consistency because she had a lot of anger okay. and would express that. And so I imagined that I'd already been hit by my mom. All right. At that point. There's one other piece I would like to 
make before we bring in unseen therapists. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit of philosophy. Okay. You don't have to agree with it, but just tell me whether you do or you don't. Okay. And this is my experience speaking. One of the things, one of the errors that all of us human beings make is that we look for love outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We look for it from our father, from our mother. You have, from the earlier part of our conversation, looked for it with partners, partners, you know, romantic partners and so on. Uh, you're looking for it outside of yourself. You want somebody to help. As Tom Cruise also said to Renee Zellweger okay, in the Jerry Maguire, in the Jerry Maguire movie, he said, you complete me. Right. Okay. You complete me. And so he's looking outside of himself to Renee Zellweger, okay, to complete himself. She, in one sense, is responsible for him experiencing love. He's looking for love outside of himself. Okay. Let me ask you this. You ever watch on television this um, TV program called The Bachelor? Yes. Well, okay. not on purpose, but I know of it. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I watch it because I think it's very entertaining, and it is a like social, a, social experiment. <laughs> yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way of emphasizing what we're talking about right now. Here we have a bachelor, and we have twenty-five, you know, good-looking guy and all that kind of stuff. And we have twenty-five women or thereabouts, all wanting to have him choose them at the end, get engaged live happily ever after. And one of the themes to all of that is they are trying to find love. They are looking for love outside themselves. And of course, there's all the, all the women, they, they squabble with each other and <laughs> chat fights. <and laughs> it gets very entertaining after a while. But they're, the idea is they are trying to find love outside themselves. You do it as a child. You're doing it as an adult. It's just something that we do here. Mm -hmm. Better. Better. And this can be achieved, by the way. It would have to go beyond this session today for more of it. But better to have it develop within yourself so that you radiate it. And then it's nice to have a romantic partner. I mean, that's really nice, okay? But it's no longer required. It might be really nice sexually, okay? But beyond that, it's not really required because there is love within yourself. You are radiating it, and because you radiate it, you will attract a lot more of it than you would ever get trying to go out and find it outside yourself. You're nodding your head, so... You, you had me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, it is okay. one of the one of my practices is actually loving myself, like le recognizing how to do that. Like it was actually in that inquiry of how do I love that which is not lovable about me uh -huh. that I then actually was able to access that God loves me, even though I didn't experience it because it wasn't showing up how I wanted. Yeah. That's yeah. It, it wasn't according to your rules. <laughs> not my not. rules. It has yeah. to be packaged like this with a very pretty bow. Yeah. It didn't and, come that way. <laughs> and come from outside myself. And by the way, once it comes or appears to come, it better stay there. You can't change anything and stuff like that. You know, it's got to still comply with my rules. Even though my rules might change, you got to change with it, even though you don't know my rules and I don't know my rules either. Right. Well, <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> and then from that, I was able to then access, I mean, it's been, it's been a long process. It's been almost a year of my Right. working and a value you know and doing my work the work that i do so that i am able and i and i totally know that it's it's 
it's like a false god, like seeking it from outside of you. It it yeah, has okay. to be from me. Okay. All right. Good. 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 Um. So now let's do an unseen therapist session. Okay. Okay. And I, again, I'm going to narrate the whole thing. Anything comes up, you can always just interrupt and say, "Hey, this shows up," or not, as the case may be. Okay. Okay. Um. No real requirements. And by the way, I don't know what I'm going to be doing either because I, I just get started and I sort of turn it over to unseen therapists and I just, I, I'm i following along too, okay? Got it. Thank you. All right. Okay, if you would, just close your eyes. Close your eyes. If you, you're, we're going to be here a little while, so, so um, take a nice deep breath if you need to and Kind of relax a bit. And as you read about in the book, um, just as a way of inviting unseen therapists, just simply recall, recall a simple loving moment in your own life and nod your head whenever you're there. All right. And with your eyes still closed, I'm going to digress for a moment. Okay. To cover something that sometimes newcomers don't quite understand well. Well, just in case, I will talk about this. Sometimes a newcomer to this will think about recalling a loving moment as, oh, my God, I'm going to be calling on God, the unseen therapist. I, I, I better do this right or it's going to fail. Okay. And so they somehow think they have to have a Hollywood moment. They need to have angels and harps playing and warm fuzzies and orchestras and all of that, okay? No. All you're doing with recalling a loving moment is doing your best to align yourself with the pure love of unseen therapists. A pure love which is actually within, not out there someplace floating in the ether. It's actually within you, but doesn't show up like we might like it all the time, okay? Because it's buried under other stuff, like this specific event that we're going to be dealing with here. So all you're really doing is saying, oh, we're going to hand you something, unseen therapists, and we're going to be listening to you. We're paying attention. Right. So do what you can. That's all that is, just so you know. Okay. So shift your focus now. You're age two and a half. Your mother's gone. In a way, thank goodness. Okay. And you're in bed and you wake up and this strange thing is happening. Your father is rubbing himself, masturbating in a way regarding your body. It's difficult for you to breathe given where his belly button is. Okay. And you're having this discomfort. You don't have to, you know, feel all this discomfort at the moment. You don't need to do that. Because we're handing this to the unseen therapist. What we're going to hand to her is your emotional response to this. That's what we're handing her. Okay. There's some fear involved. Ends up with grief. And what you call grief in time. And so what we're going to do is have you hand that to unseen therapists, but first we're going to make a, a metaphor out of it. We're going to imagine your emotional response at this time. What is going on here? And we're going to represent it as an unwanted vibration somewhere in your body. Ta-ta, 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 like that. Okay. We're not at, and we're going to, we're going to, to make it e easier, we're just going to imagine that unwanted vibration to be around your heart. Now, we're not asking you to make your heart vibrate 
No, it's an imaginary thing. It's a metaphor. We're giving a metaphor to unseen therapists. This is how it sort of looks to us here right now. Ta 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 ta. What is this? 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 So in your imagination, now, you allow unseen therapists to see this unwanted vibration, this emotional response that has built within it, I'm not lovable, something's wrong with me. I'm losing my father's love. Not sure what this is. I can't breathe. What does all this mean? An unseen therapist, of course, knows you're two and a half years old. How are you going to understand all of this? She also knows that until you resolve this, this is going to kick around in your system for the decades to come. It's going to limit you. You may not be able to voice it, articulate it precisely, but nonetheless, it's kicking around. What's wrong with me? I'm not lovable. Okay. This kind of thing. I can't breathe. I don't have control here. I uh, all of this. She understands that's where you come from. She understands you have your own rules for feeling love. Just like everybody else. Your father doesn't know what they are. Your father is making a mistake. He may feel guilty about this mistake and doesn't want it to land on him, but he likely doesn't really understand, and we're not excusing the behavior, but he likely doesn't really understand its impact on you. Perhaps more concerned with its impact on him, don't tell on me, kind of thing. All right. So, unseen therapist, in her, in her very mature way, with a maturity you don't possess at age two and a half, how could you? Okay. Sends a cooling, healing, gentle breeze, like you read about in my book, towards you. It enters your body. It surrounds your the unwanted vibration in your heart. And that vibration, that unwanted emotional response, which still kicks around in your system, can't survive with all that love. And so the ta-ta, ta-ta, ta-ta shifts. It goes ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Ta-ta, ta-ta, ta-ta. Now we're going to do that again. Here you are waking up, this strange thing, you can't breathe. Belly's in the way or belly button's in the way. What is all of this? What's wrong with me? Did I create this somehow? Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Here comes the breeze. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Now, in your imagination, repeat that again, a time or two or three or four, whatever you want, until you've gone as far as you can go. Whenever you think you've gone as far as you can go, then just open your eyes and and we'll talk about what happened. By the way, there's no grades for this. You don't get an A or a C or anything else. There is only what happens that we discuss. Okay. So go ahead, repeat it, repeat it. Give her the emotion, ta 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 ta, ta the breeze, ta 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 ta. Take your time. We're here. Open your eyes when you're done.
Okay. So let me ask you, um, were you able to follow along okay? Did you have a bunch of competing thoughts? or? No, I was able to follow along. All right. It was, more, it was more than just my heart. Oh, well, tell me. I did my heart, and then I did my knee. Your, <laughs> knee, your knees? My knee, yeah. Okay, okay, all right. And then I did my throat. And what I got was, um, I've never been alone. Like, that was the thing. I felt I was alone. And I'm just. During I, the during the events, the ejaculation and all of that, you were feeling alone. Yeah. Okay. All right. Keep going. And then. Um, you know, doing the procedure was, um, you know, it was interesting because, you know, my first feeling of, you know, remembering a moment where I felt loved was actually my dad with him, like, just loving me and kissing me and holding me. And then I heard in my head, what does that remind me of? Is that love of like the divine love? And so then that's what I was like leaning into and not having to hold the weight of it. And as I went through the remembrance, it was just like, okay, here you go. Oh, wow. Like, look, this is what happened. Wow. This was a mistake. This is what happened. Okay. And um, as if there was never a break in, in my being loved and supported the whole time. Like there has never been a break. Those are really nice academic statements, but what we want to make sure is they, they're not just academic or intellectual. Okay. <laughs> so I see I'm a I'm a great one for testing. I never trust what could be a temporary result. Okay. Oftentimes it isn't. I mean, it's a good result. It just stays. And all that. but I, but I don't want to be fooled by a temporary result. Okay. So what I'd like to have you do as a test is to close your eyes and go back to that event. There you are, young you. You're waking up and go through everything uh, exaggerate the sights the sounds the feelings even feeling alone if that's the case whatever you, what you're trying to do is get yourself upset about it. you're literally trying to see what's what's not done okay so give that a shot and let me know what happens Okay, so what's showing up is laughter. All right. Which typically for me is when I get to laughter, it means it's complete. That's okay. A, that's a tell sign for me in okay. my energetic work. Um, at And it's laughter in the, you know, like the recognition of, wow, you've been pretending this this whole time. Wow. You're human. Okay. You want to you, keep doing that? <laughs> you've been pretending, meaning you have been pretending? or I have okay. been pretending that I'm not lovable. That I'm not. Okay. All right. That I'm, that I'm to blame when there's a thing that happened. That was All just right. a thing that happened. Like I went to the movies or I, I fell down or, you know, my dad rubbed himself on me. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, it, that is inappropriate behavior, and yeah, it's not so really I, it's not really excusable in one sense. Okay. 
understandable, perhaps, but not necessarily excusable. But as it pertains to me, it's um, it's like this is what happens. This isn't who I am. Like there's that. All right. I want to get a little bit more graphic with the test. Okay. Okay. So there you are. You're waking up. Your father is rubbing himself on you, and your face nose, mouth, whatever is in his belly button, and you can't breathe. Zero in on just that. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Whatever frustration or emotion going on, get into that and tell me where you are on that zero to ten wise. Well, I, I want to say two, but it's really like a one. <laughs> okay. I feel like it should be two, but it's not a two. Well, oftentimes people will give us a number like a two or a three or a one or something like that because they can't believe it could possibly be zero. That's what right. they That's why I'm at. I'm like, I can't believe it's zero. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. I mean, if zero, if I could have it be zero, it's zero. Okay. One more piece of a test, if I can. When we started off, let me see. I think we were starting off with, um, well, I have down here a six or a seven intensity, but I think that was being smacked on the bottom. Mm -hmm. But there was a, a tightness in that you couldn't breathe. There was a tightness in your throat about speaking. There was a feeling of having some fear and having, you know, to, what is in my words here? Oh, going through this sense and having to experience grief. Okay. There was a, you had some physical responses like that. Go try to get them back, whatever you have to do, and tell me what happens. Okay, so I actually went further than than the bed scenario. And I went to my fear of crawling and it was dark and I was afraid of the dark. And so I had a little bit. And then in the same moment, I was like, here you go. I've seen therapist. Thank you. Um, and then I went to where my aunt is holding me and my father is there. And then I have fear of him having me go with him. And then I'm also noticing that he's got fear of my telling on him. Uh -huh. And that's like a one or a two. I well, the, feel like something. Okay. There. These other things you're talking about, they get a little more advanced when you get out of the book. Okay. They are called aspects and related issues. Because even though what we've done is taken a specific event, and aimed at it, you know, with unseen therapists and done something seemingly useful with it. Um, oftentimes, there are other little things that pop up. And so, like, when you say you went further, these would be other aspects which might give you a four you know, intensity or a, some other number or something like that. And and some, some people will look at that who aren't properly trained uh, would say, oh, well, it didn't work because I'm still got some intensity about it, or it was only partial or something. No, those are new issues. We didn't, we didn't, we weren't putting any of those things on the table. Right. They are the things we put on the table. You're not mentioning as being intense. Yeah, because and this is so perfect because what I put on the table has been removed. So now all that's standing left is that part that hasn't been removed. Yeah. 
Um, and I also get that if you had asked me what my number would be with the fear and what was removed, um, it would have been like an eight or a nine. And now it is like, okay, so the portion that we took away now makes the fear a four, a three, a two. And it's, and I, and I'm. <clears throat> and, and it's a different aspect. Is it? Yeah, it's a different aspect. And I'm also getting, wow, really? It's this easy? <laughs> um, and I, I'm, I mean, I'm noticing the part of me that's like, wow, can I just get out my entire life story and let's go through all of it, Unseen Therapist, and you can just well, take it all. <laughs> well, yeah, yes. the answer is yes, you can. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer also is you're not likely to do that with just the training from the intro book. You probably need a little bit more, and we've got it if you want to. I mean, that costs money and all that stuff. Um but if you want to take advanced training, it's right there for you. So you'll learn all about aspects. There's a lot of other things that go, that go on in there.